Good morning. I welcome you all to the Anderson Hall prayer. Let us begin with the hymn that is screened. Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible reading for the day is from Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. I'll begin with the story from Jeremiah chapter 38 and 39 about prophet Jeremiah and a man named Abed-Melech, who was an Ethiopian eunuch in the court of the king Zedekiah in, of Judah. This was before the Babylonian capture. Now, Jeremiah, as we know, was the weeping prophet or the prophet of gloom and doom. And he was going around proclaiming what God revealed to him about the punishments that the people of Judah were to endure as a result of God's judgment uh, on their wickedness. As we read in Jeremiah chapter 38, verse 2 and 3, Thus saith the Lord, He that remaineth in this city shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, but he that goeth forth to the Chaldeans shall live, for he shall have his life for a prey, and shall live. Thus saith the Lord, This city shall surely be given into the land of the king of Babylon's army, which shall take it. These things angered the people, for they thought Jeremiah was only after the people's ruin, and not their good. For around that time, Jeremiah's prophecies consisted of unpleasant things, or things which weren't advantageous to them. And so they persuaded the king to imprison him. They lowered him into a dungeon, which was without water, but with a mud-like quagmire. And here comes Abed-Melech. Abed-Melech, when he heard about the plight of Jeremiah, he goes to plead uh, his cause to the king. And when the king allowed him to rescue Jeremiah, he gathers these old rags and clothes and strong ropes, along with a few men, he goes and rescues Jeremiah. They pull him out of the pit. But before they pull him out, uh, Abed Melech shows a bit of thoughtfulness where he sends these pieces of cloth, the rags, soft rags, to put under Jeremiah's arms so that when they lift him up with the rope, the bare rope does not cut through the weakened limbs of the man. The man has been starved and imprisoned for quite some time. So this shows he was a kind and gentle man, and in doing this tiny act of goodness, Abed Melech was able to reap a great blessing. For later, when Jerusalem fell into captivity, God delivered two men, two men that we are concerned with. One, obviously, Jeremiah, and the second one was Abed Melech, and both were delivered in the same way. 
Uh, this deliverance was very wonderful and it brings to life what we read in Psalm chapter 91, verses 7 and 8. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. And only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. And Abed-Melech was able to do just that. He saw and he saw people fall everywhere around him, but he was still standing. Also, when we read Jeremiah chapter 39, verse 17 and 18, But I will deliver thee in that day, saith the Lord, and thou shalt not be given into the hand of the men of whom thou art afraid. For I will surely deliver thee, and thou shalt not fall by the sword, but thy life shall be for a prayer unto thee, because thou hast put thy trust in me, saith the Lord. When we read this, we can see that the blessings imposed on uh, Abed Melech was the exact opposite of the judgment God imposed on his people, the people of Judah. So we see that God delivers those that put his trust in him. And what we can learn from this, or what I have learned from this, is that Abed Melech was a man without proper identity. For Abed Melech means a servant of the king. So that probably wouldn't have been his name. He was brought in from Africa and wouldn't have been given this name at birth, most probably. So, he was a man without identity, and we care so much about our identity. We need to have a place in this world and be known for something that we forget that our identity is entwined in Christ. And in that, we are supposed to stand and show Christ's compassion. Something which Abed Melech did all those years ago as a stranger in God's land. And he showed much bravery and stood up for the injustice he saw in a very dangerous situation because it could have easily backfired on him as the people and the princes would have uh, been against Jeremiah and he would have had to face their wrath. But he still did it. He acted on his good intentions and God rewarded him. So to conclude, I would like to say it is not enough that we be good, but that we do good tirelessly and in doing so we are to exhibit the Christ in us and God will definitely reward us for it. So do not be wary to do good in any way and let's keep our hope awaiting for God's reward. Let's look to God in prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this lovely day that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for helping us to praise and worship you. Thank you for helping us to meditate on your word. Lord, as we have heard, help us to apply it in our lives. Help us to do as we have heard, Lord. Help us to not be wary and to do good at all times. For your sake and to glorify you, Father. Loving Lord, we submit these times into your hands as we go through these difficult periods of times. We pray for all those who have been in trouble or are still in trouble. I pray that your comfort and your deliverance go to them. We thank you, Master, once again for your mindfulness and mercy as we go about with our work this day. We pray that your guidance and your presence be with us. In Jesus' most precious name I ask. Amen.